Okay, guys, for today's English class, for the 10th grade, we're going to do the student book page 15. The page 15 is our student, is our unit review. What we're going to review? The simple present tense and the simple past tense, also progressive. But first, the first. The simple past tense, the simple present tense is used to talk about our everyday activities. Pay attention. We use the simple present tense to talk about our everyday activities. Lo utilizamos para hablar sobre las cosas que hacemos, las actividades que hacemos todos los días. Things that we do regularly or at specific intervals. Before you start learning this tense form, think about things you do every day. Here we have an example of the question and the possible answer. It says, what do you do in the morning? Can some can someone translate this question into Spanish? What do you do in the morning? ¿Qué haces en la mañana? ¿Qué haces tú en la mañana? I go for a walk. Why the words do and go are in red? Because they are nouns, adverbs, verbs. What are do and go? Gramaticalmente, ¿qué son do and go? Hacer o ir, ¿qué son? Verbo. Verbos. ¿Y en qué tiempo están esos verbos? Do and go. Present. Present tense. Okay, very good. So, it's true. We use a simple present to talk about actions that we do every day. Okay? The verb goes in infinitive form or the base form of the base form of the verb. In this case, do and go. There is an important point to consider in a simple present tense when the subject is a singular noun. For example, boy, girl, teacher, young, or a third person, third person singular pronoun. For example, he, she, it. The verb takes the marker S. Entonces, es importante tomar en cuenta o considerar que en el presente simple, cuando el sujeto es un nombre singular, boy, girl, teacher, or young, or a third person, singular pronoun, o el singular de la tercera persona, he, she, it, el verbo se le añade un marker S. ¿Qué quiere decir? In this case, could be does. Let's use the verse that we have in the first part. If the verb is do, we add a market, marker S. Si el verbo termina en una vocal, in this case, O, Añadimos ES, goes, ok, does. En el caso del verbo go, pasa el path, happens the same. Ends with a vowel. So we have to add, add S or ES. We add ES. Si el verbo termina en una vocal, como do y go, en vez de añadir marker S, añadimos es 
Pero, for example, if the verb is start, start is a verb. Start to say for a person singular pronoun, for example, she, she starts. Or it starts. We add S in como un marker S. The verb does not make, take the marker S when the subject is a plural noun. En caso de que el sujeto, o de quien está haciendo la acción, quien ejecute la acción, es un sujeto, el sujeto es un nombre plural, entonces no añadimos la S al verbo. For example, some examples of the plural noun. Books, trees, pens, students, teachers, dogs, boys or girls. Or the pronoun they, we, and you. In this case, let's use the verse here. Um, to or go, to and go, for example. They, I'm not writing. They do the homework. Okay, in this case, we don't have to add ES to say, we don't say they does the homework, they do the homework. Uh, students do the homework, okay? Cuando está en plural el sujeto, they, we or you, o estos ejemplos que están aquí, los libros, los árboles, las plumas, los perros, los chicos, no añadimos una S al verbo, okay? Y the first person noun, pronoun, I, also doesn't take the marker S. También cuando utilizamos este pronombre, the personal, este pronombre personal, I, I do. I do my part. No añadimos S or marker S al verbo. Are you following me? Are you clear? ¿Estamos claros? Yes. yes. Ok, thank you. Yes, we are. Ok, now let's read the simple past tense. The simple past tense is a verb tense that it is used to talk about things that happened or exist before now. Imagine someone asks, what your brother Wolfman, Wolfman did while he was in town last weekend. Entonces, ¿qué quiere decir? Someone can, can translate what do you think is the main idea of this Text. The simple past is a verb tense that is used to talk about things that happened or exist before now. What does it mean? Voy a decirlo en español. It doesn't matter for me. ¿Qué quiere decir esto en español? ¿Qué es el pasado simple? El pasado simple es un verbo, un tiempo verbal que se usa para hablar sobre cosas que ocurrieron o existieron antes de la hora. Antes de la hora. Muy bien, cosas que ya ocurrieron, que ya sucedieron, que ya pasaron antes de hoy. Yesterday. ¿Ok? Ahora dice, imagina que alguien te pregunta qué hizo tu hermano cuando él estuvo en la ciudad las, el fin de semana pasado. Here, como es simple, cuando hablamos en pasado simple, solamente o simplemente, como su nombre lo dice, el verbo cambia a el tiempo pasado. En este caso, enter, enter, is a regular verb. Okay? Es un verbo regular. 
ya sabemos que los verbos regulares solamente se le añada ed para decir su tiempo en pasado. En este caso, won es el pasado del verbo win. Win. ¿Es un verbo regular o es un verbo irregular? Regular or irregular verb? Regular. Irregular. Why is irregular? We don't need to add an ed. Irregular. And the pronunciation, the spelling of the verb. And the pronunciation actually change. The sentence says Wolfgang entered. A hula hoop contest. So here, ¿cómo sabemos que estamos en pasado? Because the verb, the verb is in past tense. He won the silver medal. Él ganó la medalla de plata. Entonces, we are talking about things or activities or whatever that happened in past, and the past is anything that is before now. The simple past tense shows that you are talking about something that has already happened. Remember, the simple past tense shows that you are talking about something that has already happened. This is often expressed with a simple past tense of the verb to be an adjective noun or a prepositional phrase. Here we have some, some sentences, well, not some, lot of sentences talking in simple present tense and simple past tense. For example, the number one, Christopher, read the number one in the simple present tense. Uh, my father go, goes, goes, goes to gym every day. Every day. Entonces, my father goes to gym every day. Christian is talking about something that his father do commonly every day, okay? Como cuando hablamos de nuestra rutina, our daily, our daily routine, we use, we can use the present tense. Okay, Ileana, read the number 10 in for the simple past tense. Um, la 10 del simple past tense, ¿verdad? Yes. When did you buy this mobile? When did you buy this mobile? Okay. In this case, Ileana, do you think that uh, this sentence, the number 10, the verb is in present tense or is in past tense? Okay, let me explain you what happened here. You must say, but teacher, here, by is in present. Because the past tense of this verb is both. Porque en este caso, by, there is in red actually, is in, is in present, is the base form of the verb. ¿Por qué está en la base del verbo? Porque cuando hacemos una pregunta, when you make questions, la base del verbo no cambia, cambia nuestro verbo auxiliar. Que en este caso, cuando hacemos una pregunta, decimos, what do you, where do you, when do you, o how do you. Como estamos preguntando en presente simple. Pero cuando hacemos una pregunta en pasado, Entonces, no cambia la base del verbo, cambia nuestro verbo auxiliar. En este caso, nuestro verbo auxiliar sería do, cambia al pasado. ¿Y cuál es el pasado de do? Did. When did you buy this mobile? ¿Cuándo compraste ese móvil? 
¿Se entiende? Cuando hacemos preguntas utilizando el pasado simple, no cambia la base del verbo. Cambia the auxiliary verb, el verbo auxiliar. En este caso, do, siempre preguntamos what do, what do you, when do you, where do you, how do you. Del do es el que va a cambiar a su pasado. Muy bien. Said, can you read the sentence number 19 in the simple present tense? Yes. Go ahead. Alex brush her teeth twice a day. Okay. The same. We're talking about the routine, the Alex routine. Twice a day. That means that this boy do that activity dos veces al día, twice a day. Brushes. Why the bird, why the bird here brushes ends with a marker S? Porque no dice brush, Alex brush. Se cepilla. ¿Por qué termina con S? Tiene el marker S. Who can explain that? Because the noun is singular and is a proper First. noun. Ajá, uh -huh. and just one thing, te faltó decir una cosa. The subject is Alex, right? And the subject is, yes, is singular. It's a proper noun, but it is in, it is talking in third person. Está hablando en tercera persona. Very good. Let me look for another volunteer. Here I have to choose the volunteers. So, peculiarly volunteers, Valerie M. Yes, you. Yes, you, lady. ¿Qué digo? Ajá. Please, read the number four in the chart of the simple past tense. What? Number four, simple past tense. They went to the office early. They went to the office early. Okay, good. In this case, pay attention here. The verb go past to went. Ellos fueron a la oficina temprano. In this case, it's simple. We only have to translate the verb to his, its past um, tense. Okay, very good. And so here I played football. We don't add nothing else. Does he write email? Okay, for the simple present, for example, here the number six, pay attention to this. Does he write an email? Um, el sujeto pasa a secundario, a segundo lugar en la estructura gramatical, y el verbo que debería estar acá en una en una afirmación, en una oración afirmativa, eh, sí, afirmativa en un o command, el verbo va a primero. Does he, has he, is he, for example. So it's okay. Are you clear with that? Okay. As you said that you are clear, so go to page 15, please. To solve the unit review. Vocabulary, extreme sports. You can go back to the pages in your book to help you to solve that. Let's complete the names of the extreme sports with the words on the right. The words on the right are this. 
diving, climbing, boring, jumping, running, or surfing. For example, the number one, rock. Vamos a completar el nombre de estos deportes extremos utilizando from one to 12, utilizando las palabras que están a la derecha. Okay, using the words on the right. To the extreme, the ultimate event for senior sport fans coming soon to a city near you. Okay. So here, for example, rock, remember, complete this with the words that are here in the right. Rock, I have to choose a word. It could be rock diving, rock climbing, rock boarding, no, rock jumping, no. Rock running, neither, and rock surfing, no. The best option to complete the name of the sport, that string sport that begins with rock, is rock climbing. So here, rock climbing is the name of the sport. Complete the number two, free. Free jumping. Free jumping, good. Also free running is an, oh. also free running, both. Snow is easy. Boarding. Snowboarding, good. Tower. Tower what? Climbing. Tower. Climbing. Yeah. Yeah, it could be and also Okay, here, bungee. Bungee jumping. 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 Good, awesome. Wind is easy. Wind surfing. Wind surfing, yes. Sky is easy also. Diving. Yeah, very good. Good job. Ice. Climbing. Mm-hmm. Good. Skate, easy. Skate. It's like surfing, but in the pavement. Remember that story? So it's skate, skateboarding. Skateboarding. Good. Free. Running. Yeah, good. Base. Jumping. Yeah. And the last one, body. Surfing. Surfing, good, good job. Yeah, good job. Number two, achievements and challenges. Okay, you have to complete a first introduction with the word in the box. The words in the box are challenge, fame, invitation, life, obstacle, potential, problems, 
risks something and summit. Say hi, my name is Fearless Fred and I want to help you fulfill your Okay, let's write it for you. Potential, for example. And to add to that a string, you don't just watch a string's bars, you take part in them. Of course, it's dangerous, but in life, we all have to take it was a fish. Okay, risk. Every day we encounter, 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 problems. For last time I, I wrote. and look for ways to overcome. Each new, each new, when a problem could be an obstacle. Yes. Obstacles. That is put in our path. Here's your chance to attend to do, to do, you do something, something challenging that's exciting at the same time. I'm not asking you to risk your to risk your, no te estoy pidiendo que arriesgues tú. Life. 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 Good. And if you face this, si tú encaras este, reto. Challenge. 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 Okay. Then you could reach the of the string sport. You can summit. 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 Okay. Of the string sports mountain. I hope you'll accept this. Accept this. Invitation. Yeah, invitation. And join us as to the extreme, who knows? Maybe you even achieve fame. Fame. Good job. Okay, for grammar. Okay, we I don't know if we have enough time. Okay. <clears throat> Present tense review and past tense review. Test that says complete the information with a simple present or also use present participle or a simple present passive form. How to take part? Okay, you have to use the verbs that are in parentheses. What time is it? Ah, oh. Okay, for that part, déjeme, let me stop recording to talk to you clearly. <laughs> 